let's see. If we all have our elements, we we'll lift it up as I read, I read in Jesus' name. Luke 24, 30 says, and it came to pass as he sat at the meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and broke and gave it to them. And their eyes were open and there they knew him and he vanished out of their sight. Amen. Jesus took his body, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples. So we are going to do the same thing tonight in faith. That as we break this body of our Lord Jesus Christ, that as we eat this very body, our spiritual eyes are going to open tonight. Our spiritual ears are going to open. And as their eyes were open and he left, his presence was, with, was still with the disciples. So as we are taking this, his presence is with us tonight. And as we take this very body of his, this very body of his was broken, that us should be made whole. And upon this very body of Jesus Christ, it says it bore our infirmities, every form of sickness, every form of disease, that everything was nailed upon this very body of our Lord Jesus Christ. So tonight, as you are taking this very body of Jesus Christ, as you are appreciating it, as you are giving him thanks, just reflect everything that he did, everything that they did upon this very body of his for years to be in sound health, for years to be made whole. As you reflect all of those things, I just want you to open your mouth and you appreciate him because only him could allow himself to undergo whatever he underwent for you and I. So just appreciate him as you break the body of our Lord Jesus Christ and you take it. Amen. Father, we just want to say thank you for this very body of yours. Father, we appreciate you. Daddy, we say thank you for your broken body that was broken for us to be made whole. We thank you because upon this very body of yours, you bore every form of sickness, every form of disease. Lord, we say thank you. Father, we give you the glory that as we take this very body of yours, our lives will never remain the same. Father, we thank you that you gave it to the disciples. Their spiritual eyes were open. We just want to thank you that for tonight, our eyes will be open for us to see the deep things in your words, for us to see things that Lord God Almighty will assist us to advance your kingdom in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you as we take this very body of yours in the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. If we have, we're going to descend the blood of Jesus and I'll read from the book of Revelation. Verse 12. And verse 11, Revelation 12, 11 says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimonies. And they loved not their lives unto the dead. Amen. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. So we just wanna lift up the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we say, Father, we thank you for this very blood of yours. 
that made us to overcome every evil works that has made us to overcome every form of affliction that has made us to overcome every form of hardship every form of difficulties every form of retrogation every form of delay this very blood of jesus has reconciled us to our father this very blood of jesus has given us a new identity that we can be called ambassador that we can be called his own a child of god through this very blood of jesus father we say thank you for the blood that you shed on the cross of calvary for our sake father we say thank you for this very blood of yours O king of glory it was like the passover lamb that um he said um, they should put it on the doorpost that when, they, when the angel of death will come and when he sees it, he's going to pass over it. That tonight, as we are taking this blood of Jesus, that whatsoever that will come towards us, that thing will not hurt us. It's going to pass over us. The same way that the angel of death passed towards the land of the Israelites in the name of Jesus. That as we take this very blood of Jesus tonight, let it cleanse our system. Let it purify our system. That any form of disease or whatsoever is going to flush it out from the crown of it to the source of our feet. That as we take this very blood of Jesus Christ, it's going to exempt us from every form of plague, from every form of um, destruction or whatsoever, from the pit of hell, from the kingdom of darkness. It shall not be our portion in the name of Jesus. That this very blood of Jesus, it will be a covering, it will be a sheep over our lives and those of our family members, over our entire household. In the name of Jesus. That as we take this very blood of Jesus, we take the life of Christ in us. That any other life that has not been planted by him, the power that is in this blood will eject it back to hell. In the name of Jesus. That as we take this very blood of Jesus, we we'll receive peace, we we'll receive joy from it. Whatsoever the finished works, whatsoever compliment that was spoken upon this very blood of Jesus, we we'll receive it tonight in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. And they will give you the glory as we take it now in the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Okay, thank you. So tonight, um, we're going to continue with the book of Ezra. I just want to use this opportunity to say um, thank you to Pastor Midwe that has laid the foundation already in chapter one, two, three, and four. Thank you so much, Pastor, for laying the foundation for putting the altars. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. So, um, Where this thing? First, it's actually type. Um, why does it keep coming like this? Thank you. Okay. Good evening, family. Once again, sorry for the little bit delay. Um, please, can we just bow down our heads and we pray before we commence with the Ezra 5? Amen. Um, Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord, we just want to say thank you, O King of Glory, for another opportunity that you have granted us to come before your presence. Father, we say thank you for this is a day that you have made you so much rejoice and be glad. Indeed, we're going to rejoice and be glad because you have asked us to do so. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for our going and our coming in. Father, we just thank you that, Lord God Almighty, you are so faithful, you are so good, you are so kind, you are so loving to us, to our entire family members, to our loved ones. I think we say take all the glory, take all the honor. Father, we have come, Lord God Almighty, to worship you. We have come to study your word. Father, we pray King of God, that as we humble ourselves tonight, we ask the Holy Spirit to be our teacher. We ask the Holy Spirit to lead us tonight. We ask the Holy Spirit to take the stage upon this platform and do what only he can do. Father, we pray that 
each and every one that has come, Lord God Almighty, to listen to your word, that they will not go back the same. But that, Lord, you will transform them, O oh, King of Glory, that your light will shine over them. That King of Glory, ancients of day, that as they listen to this very word of yours, Lord, you will edify them, body, spirit, and soul, unto the glory of your name. That, Lord, as we humble ourselves under the leadership of the Holy Spirit to guide us, to lead us, to direct us, to search your heart, to search your word, and reveal to us the deep and the secret things of your kingdom. Father, we say thank you. The Lord will not only be listeners, but will be doer of your work according to James in the name of Jesus. And Father, we come against any spirit of destruction. Father, we thank you, Lord God Almighty, that tonight, Abba, our hearts will be receptive, Lord God Almighty, to receive your word. Lord, that um, as we humble ourselves, Father, take the stage and speak through or speak through our mouth. That is going to be an interactive session so that you alone will take the glory. Thank you, Lord, as you reveal yourself over each and every one on this platform. That even those that they are still on their way coming, Father, we thank you that you hasten their footsteps so that as they come in one accord, Lord God Almighty, the glory at the end will be yours. Father, we just thank you. We just give you the glory for you are faithful. Be thou exalted, be thou glorified, now and forever in Jesus' mighty name. I pray. Amen. Amen. Um, in the book of Ezra, chapter 5, as I earlier said, um, thank you, Pastor Midred, for taking the first four chapters of this book. And uh, I'll just continue with the. Um, before I read uh, a short summary of. Um, what I'm gonna be doing in Ezra five, I'm gonna read the the last um, the last verse. That's from Ezra four. That should be um, Ezra four twenty four. Probably I should read twenty three and twenty four. So that we should pick up from where Pastor Mitre ended. We should be in a line. Amen. So okay, twenty. Uh, this is Ezra four. 23 says, as soon as the copy of the letter of King Tazazek was read to Rahum and Shimei, the secretary and their associate, they went immediately to the Jews in Jerusalem and compelled them by force to stop. Thus, the work on the house of God in Jerusalem came to stand still until the second year of the reign of Darius, king of Persia. So <clears throat> from this two verse that I just read, <clears throat> the letter that was given by King Atazazaz, and when they read that letter, the people, they hurriedly went to Jerusalem to ask the Jews that have been building the walls, building the temple, they asked them to stop immediately. And as it said, that immediately they stopped. They, they did obey the word of the, the king, Atazazek, and they had to stop the building of the house of God. So I'm going to take it from there now. If you see that within this verse four and this verse five, if we did read as Pastor Midre asked us to read ahead of time, I have a, just a little bit of summary here that I'm going to read. And the please, I hope you're gonna follow. If you did read, you're gonna follow with me. The summary that I have in the chapter five, the first one that I extract was the, the prophets. We have the two prophets. And when we read, you'll see the two prophets, the Haggai and Zachariah. Those are the two prophets that they address, they address the people. The other heading that I took, it was the letter to King Darius. Then I also had the rebuilding of the temple. And I, I also asked the, I also have the, the question, the question in the letter that they were like question King Darius. So is it really true that before um, King um, Cyrus, King Cyrus, before he passed away, 
did he like ask these people to continue to rebuild the state? So I have um, the head guy and Zachariah, they offer a prophecy to their followers. As they met with their followers, it was noted that Zerubbabel will be contributed. Zerubbabel will contribute in building what? In building the house of God in the city of Jerusalem. So there was this uh, governor. This governor, his name was what? Tatiana. There was this governor, Tatiana, that he also arose also, sent a letter also. He also had his own clique also. He also had his own people, his own assistant that were with him also when they were about to start building again. So he also sent a letter again, wanted them to stop the building again. And this letter, so he had to send a letter to King Darius. And we saw that King Darius now was a new king. So they had to give him a letter, even though he was, King Darius was busy about his throne ship. They had to send him a letter for him to, to inform him about the temple that they have started to build to inquire if truly there was an instruction for this temple, for these people to continue to build this temple again. So, uh, Pastor Mitchell, can you just put it off? Thank you. Is she there? Pastor Mijere. It's like she's not there. Hello? I stepped off the computer. Okay. I didn't hear what Sorry. you said. <laughs> Sorry, it's okay. Hmm. So what was the question? Or what was no, the I was question? like saying that I should put up the, okay. the extra five, the king, yes, the NIV. So okay, so I'll start. It, it starts with like um, this is one of the one of the governors I was saying, Tatiana, letter to Darius. It says, now her guy, the prophet, and Zachariah, the prophet, these are minor prophets in the Old Testament, a descendant of Idu, prophesied to the Jews in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of God of the Israel, who was over them. Then Zerubbabel, son of Chittah, and Joshua, son of Josoda, sent to work to rebuild the house of God in Jerusalem. And the prophets of God were with them, supporting them. Amen. So in this case, we saw that if you look at from chapter 4 to this chapter 5, right? From chapter 4, they said the last chapter we just read, they said when uh, King um, Atezat asked that they should stop building the temple. And from this chapter five, from what I got, they said, um, I think it was like an interval for almost 15 years that they stopped building what? The house of God. The people obeyed. And since as they stopped building the house of God, they now, they turn now to themselves and the house of God was not their priority anymore. Instead, their priority was they, they turned to themselves and start building, um, start taking care of the, their own self, their own uh, building their own estate, building their own kingdom, doing things in priority to things that regards to them and like just completely like put aside the work of God. They didn't bother anymore again to even think about like, they were like building something. No, no, they completely forget about it. And they were now building things for them on self. Until we now have these two prophets that we have been introduced to. We have Haggai and we have Zachariah. So Haggai and Zachariah, as we just read, 
uh, Pastor Mitchell, I would like us to read something because they talk about um, Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the prophet, descendants of this, they are the prophets. That they, you know, they have, they have this prophecy that they prophesied to the Jews about rebuilding back this temple. I would like us to go to Haggai and read something there, Haggai 1, so that we we'll understand what was the prophecy all about that they got. Thank you. Okay, in the book of Haggai 1, it talks about a call to build the house of the Lord. In the second year of King Darius, on the first day of the sixth month, the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai to Zerubbabel, son of Shittai, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, son of Josoda, the high priest. This is what the Lord Almighty says. So this is the prophecy. These people say, so the people, they were saying, this time has not yet come to rebuild the Lord's house. So when they did ask the people to stop the building and everything was standstill to them, they were like saying that the time to build the Lord's house has not yet come. Then the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai. It is time for you to, it is time for you yourself to, be the living in your, in your panel house while this house remains a room. So it was just like all of them, they were living in their estate. I, mean, I don't know what is estate, I'll call it estate or mansion, or nice house, you know, but the house of the Lord was in ruin. Nobody bothered about it, nobody cared about it. They were like saying that it's not yet time to build the house of God. Five says, now this is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thoughts to your ways. You have planted much, but harvested little. You eat, but never have enough. You drink, but never have you feel. You put on clothes, but are not warm. You earn wages only to put them in a purse without holes in it. So I want to believe that because of the house of God for 15 years that they completely, nobody bothers, nobody cares. I want, that's why I want to believe that this thing was like befalling them as they said here that, you know, that they were like, that they would eat and they didn't get full. They end their wages, like you end your wages, you put it, it was like, you know, you have your pocket has hole. It was just leaking. We all know that at times they, they have talked about sacrifices that at times if you have your tithe, if you don't pay your tithe, maybe something might happen. Not if something might happen in the sense that the tithe that you refuse to pay, either you take that tithe to, you just spend it in a way that, you know, but just because of not obeying maybe the, the rules, the laws of our father. So you just spend, at the end, you spend it so carelessly. So it's the same thing that was happening to those people, you know. But I want to believe that they themselves, they do not understand that probably what, like, these things that were happening to them, maybe it's because of the, the house of God that they have completely they forgot about it. Nobody was even, like, caring. So the house was in, a, in all ruin. But all they were thinking is about themselves living in their nice, nice house. You know, they were not thinking about God. But at the same time, they were, they, you know, they had food, they had everything, but still yet, they still had a problem. Amen. Verse seven says, this is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. Go up into the mountain and bring down timbers and build my house so that I may take pleasure in it and be honored says the Lord. So now, God is saying that the time to build a house is now. That they have to go and fetch the materials, the things that they, because the things that they need to use in building that house. So this is a prophecy. I just wanted us, I wanted us to see, because in the book of Ezra 1, they just talk about um, Haggai and um, Zachariah, they had a prophecy. So this, this, this is the prophecy. So um, it talks now that um, 
sorry, verse. I'm on verse eight, go up into the mountain and bring down timber and build my house so that I may take pleasure in it and be honored, says the Lord. No, most often when we obey the ways of the Lord, he blesses us. It's not like, it's not like saying that the, he, does, he doesn't want us to have things. Actually, he wants us to have things. And at the same time, he also wants us to take care of the things that his own things also. Nine says, you expected much, but, but see, it turns out to be little. What you brought home, I blew away. Why? Declared the Lord Almighty. Because of my house, which remains in you, why each of you is busy with your own houses. So this, it just, it gives, it, it, it like tells us why they were going through all those things. The Lord says, because of the because of his house, he is not happy. All they think, they, they, that's, their focus is all about their, they, they, they think about themselves. They don't even think about the house of God. So it's the same thing with us today that um, God has given us an assignment to carry, to advance his kingdom or whatsoever. And uh, if we don't show the if we don't show the concern, or if we don't go before God to ask him, how do we go about this thing? Even if we don't have the means or whatsoever, we have to go closer to him to ask him about it. And not like completely like, even if you don't have the means or whatsoever, you just like relax and stay because you don't have the means. Okay, let me just struggle and see what I can do for my own self. And you don't think about the things of, of God. So like with these people, so that's why he was like, he's, he just said here that um, that you expect much, but see, it turns out to be little. What you brought home, I blew away. Why? Declares the Lord Almighty, because of my house, which remained in ruin. So God was not happy with what they were doing. So that's why at the same time, God, they were not really fruitful in whatever they were doing. Why each of you is busy with your own house. Therefore, because of you, the heavens have withheld their dew and the earth, and the earth it crops. So just because of the fact that nobody, they didn't bother about the house of God that was standing still and it was in ruin. So it's like God held the rain. So it, maybe they didn't have rain. Maybe what they were, they were, they were, they, were um, they did plan their crop, but there was no. It was it was it wasn't really like yielding um, enough food. The, the, the increase it didn't really see the increase of whatever they were doing, but it was all because of God. God, I think God was the one doing it. From what we are reading from this, so it now say, call for a drought on the field and the mountains, on the grain, the new wine, the olive oil, and everything else the ground produce, and on the people and the livestock and all the labor of your hand. Then Zerubbabel, son of Shittiah, Joshua, son of Jodak, and the high priest, and the whole remnant of the people obeyed the voice of the Lord their God, and the measure, the message of the prophet Haggai, because the Lord their God had sent him, and the people feared the Lord. Amen. Then Haggai, the Lord, then Haggai, the Lord messenger, gave this message of the Lord to the people, and I will you declare the Lord. So the Lord tear up the spirit of Zerubbabel, son of Shittiah, governor of the Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, son of Zediah, the high priest. Amen. So this, this was a prophecy. So with all of this, we thank, we thank God for the, the this, these two um, prophets, Zachariah and uh, Haggai, that God gave them the prophet. God gave them the prophecy and asked them to tell the people to go ahead and build his house. Amen. As, as we, let's go back to the book of Ezra. So from the from verse one and two that we just read, now Haggai the prophet and Zachariah the, the prophet and the descendants of Edith prophesied to the Jews the Jews in the Judah and in Jerusalem in the name 
of the God of the Lord who was over them. Then Zerubbabel, the son of Shittai, and Joshua, the son of Zedekiah, set to work to rebuild the house of God in Jerusalem, and the prophet of God were with them, supporting them. So when that prophecy now came now, the two prophets, now, they had to now tell the people that we have to go and continue the building of the, the Lord's house. So as these people now, as they went now, knowing that these were prophets, the prophet they preached to them about continuing the building of that house. We see that when they started building the house, now in verse three, we now see that there was also a force again that rise up again. Verse three says, at that time, Tatania, the, 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 the governor of the trans Ephraim and Shittaya, the um, Bozinia and their associate went to them and asked opposition again. Who authorized you? Sorry. Mm, okay, thank you. Who authorized you to rebuild this temple and to finish it? They also asked, what are the names of those who are constructing this temple? But the eye of God, but the eye of their God was watching over the elders of the Jews and they were not and they were not stopped until a report could go to Darius and this written reply be received. So when the <clears throat> when this Tataniah, the governor, and his um what I call it Antorash, his associate, when they saw that they started building this house of God again, they rise up again and still want them to like put a stop, not to continue to build this house. But I thank God that. By this time now, because of the, the prophet had ministered to the people, the people, they, they didn't even listen to them. So they continued. They did, because previously, we saw that in chapter 4, they did stop. But this time now, the people, they do not stop. So they, they continue building the house. They continue building the house of God. So now, Tatania had to write a letter now to King Dairos concerning the construction. So in verse six, it says, this is a copy of the letter that Titania, the governor of the trans Euphrates, and Shitaya, Bozinea, and the associate, the officials of trans Euphrates sent to King Jairus. So they now send a letter complaining about those people building the wall without anybody building the house of God, without anybody authorizing them to build that house. The report they sent him read as follows. This was the letter. To King Dairos, cordially greetings. The king should know that you went to the district of Judea, to the temple of the great God. The people are building in with large stones and placing the timbers in the walls. The work is being carried on with diligence and it's making rapid progress under their direction. So to them, I wanna believe that when they look at the materials that these people they were using to build this wall, probably maybe they thought that um, the, the materials is something to like, maybe they're gonna cause war because from the talk about the hate, the way the stones were, maybe there were the stones in those days that, what I was like, um, the, the Hitler, the Hitler kind of building. So they were like looking and saying that maybe these people are building this to cause war in due time or whatsoever. So when they send this letter now to King Dairos, so they, at the same time, they were asking them also this question. We question the elders and ask them, who authorized you to, are repeating this one, to rebuild this temple and to finish it? We also ask them their names so that we could write down the names of their leaders for your information, of which is normal, you know. They wanted to get all their names so that they could like put it in their archives, put, make a report, everything of it, so that they'll be able to have full evidence concerning everything that is going on. So this is the answer they gave them. We are the servants of the God 
of heaven and earth. And we are rebuilding the temple that was built many years ago. One that a great king of Israel built and finished. But because our ancestors angered the God of heaven, he gave them into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the Chides, king of Babylon, who destroyed this temple and deported the people to Babylon. And I want, I want to believe that these people, since, as I said, they were building it because God has asked them to build. And despite whatever uh, they call him Patania or the governor and his associate, despite whatever they were saying, it didn't bother because in verse five, they said the eye of God was upon them. So it was like, by this time, they are no more afraid. It's just like saying that, you know, if God has called you and assigned you to do something, if you have heard from God that my daughter, my brother, go do this. So whosoever is saying whatever, I remember it was it Pastor Paul, he was saying something, that if she has heard from God, she doesn't care whether it's whosoever is saying what though, she's going ahead. It's the same thing. These people, they knew that God, the eye of God was watching over them. I think there's somewhere, is it um. Is it in Chronicles that talks that this? it says the eye, the eye of God goes through and through watching you and I. It's the same thing here. So if the, either the hand of God or the eye of God is watching you doing something, nobody can oppose you. So it's the same thing that was happening. So these people, despite the fact that the enemy, they came, they wanted to do, they wanted to stop them or whatsoever. They didn't care. They said they were doing it with, they were doing it under the name of the God of the Israel that has given them the go ahead with the prophets that have had them. So that's why they were building and they couldn't stop this time. And the building was going so rapid, so progressively. Amen. So and verse 12 talked about, um, okay, but because our ancestors angered the God of heaven, he gave them into the hands of Nebuchadnezzar, the child and the king of Babylon, who destroyed this temple and deported the people to Babylon. So we all, Nebuchadnezzar, what he did, he destroyed the temple, took away the things whatsoever. But now God has given, God has um, found back the, the things. God told the prophet that as they are building the temple, they will have to take back all those, the things that Nebuchadnezzar has taken from the temple and they will bring them back to it. So it's just, this is like, um, it's an advice to, to, to me and to you that if God has given us an assignment and God has assured you and I in order to advance his kingdom, probably there will be opposition there are people that will be against you, but because you have heard God, we have to continue, we have to go ahead because God is going to back us. And if God backs you, if God is for you, who can be against you? Nobody. Verse 13 says, however, in the first year of Cyrus, king of Babylon, King Cyrus issued a decree to build this house of God. He even removed from the temple of Babylon the gold and the silver article of the house of God, which Nebuchadnezzar had taken from the temple in Jerusalem and brought to the temple in Babylon. Then the king Cyrus gave them to a man named Shishbaksha. Shishbaksha whom he had appointed governor. And he told him, take this article and go and deposit them in the temple in Jerusalem and rebuild the house of God on its side. So before, like before King Cyrus, before he passed away, King Cyrus, King Cyrus he had left um, an archives about 
the rebuilding of this um the house of God the temple. Because by then they said that I think it was in chapter two, because they said almost fifth there were fifty thousand Jews that returned back to Jerusalem. So um and in that um archive, King Cyrus he has left everything about them rebuilding back the house of God. Verse 16 says, so this um, Shishbakza came and laid the foundation of the house of God in Jerusalem. From that day to the present, he has been under the construction, but it's not yet finished. Now, if it pleases the king, let a search be made in the royal archives of Babylon to see if King Cyrus did in fact issue a decree to rebuild his house of God in Jerusalem. Then let the king send us his decision in this matter. So it's just like, you know, the people that really wanted to really make sure the, is it um, the king Tatania and his associate? They really wanted to make sure that these people that are rebuilding this thing, if truly there's any record kept somewhere. I remember when I was watching um, uh, Pastor Midget, the one that, um, is it the, what, um, Ezra, is it three and four whatsoever? Pastor Midget said something that there are times that somebody, you want to do something, somebody will go to bring your pass in order to stop you not to do whatever you are doing. So it's the same thing like here, they said, there, there were records that have been kept by King Cyrus concerning the rebuilding of that, of the, of the temple. So now <clears throat> these people, <clears throat> they wrote to Darius, they wanted Darius to, they didn't want this, this building to, they didn't want these people, the Jews to continue to build this thing. So they wanted Darius by all means, but Darius now, King Darius now is a new king. They wanted him to stop this building by all costs. They wanted him to stop. So, and I want to believe that um, King Darius, as we're going to see in chapter six, thank God for him that he took his time to, to really, to, to, to do a search to see if truly there were records being kept in order to continue the building of this temple. We're gonna see that in chapter six. So um, actually in this um, chapter five, we saw that despite the fact that the, 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 um, the, the two prophets, Haggai and Zachariah, they really assisted, they preached to the people. And because of what they preached to the people, it inspired the people to continue building this house of God. The people do not stop the word of God. So I remember this morning, um, um, Pastor uh, Kwame was emphasizing about the word of God, that we need to dwell on the word of God because the word of God is going to assist us in so many ways. And I want to believe that because of what the, these two prophets, they had to preach to the people. When the, 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 the opposition, the enemies came this time, they didn't bother. They didn't stop. But because of what the prophet had preached to them, they continue building the house. So it's just like, um, Telling you and I, as I said, that um, if we embark on doing something, advancing, advancing God's kingdom, we'll, along the line, we'll have enemies that don't want to stop us. They'll fight us in so many ways. But if truly you have the word of God, or if you have received something from God as you study the word of God, obviously you will receive something and of which 
God is going to tell you what to do through his words and through the word of God as you held on that word. You are going to forge ahead in his kingdom advancement. And if he gives you a word, he's going to back you up the same way that his eyes were upon the Jews. As they were breathing the this thing, his eyes was upon them. So nobody could do them anything because it was a set time to build the house of God. It was a set time to complete that temple. So despite what the, um, the king, is it the, the tenant, the governor, despite what him and his associates they were about to do, they couldn't do anything because God has assured them that this is a time that they have to build that temple. They have to finish the temple because it has been too long. Just imagine for 15 years, if God gives you a project and then you want to start doing that project, you know, so maybe there's an attack and you just leave the project like that. How do you think, how is God, how, how is God going to feel? How is he going to feel? Knowing that is something that to advance the kingdom and advancing the kingdom is something that is going to like assist a lot of people through you, a lot of people that are going to succeed through that kingdom advancing and stuff. And uh, because you had an attack and uh, you, you, you just like turn yourself and you say, okay, I cannot do this anymore or whatsoever it is. How do you think God going to feel? Amen. So um, this was the list that I had for Ezra 5. Um, I'll be very grateful to, for any contribution to also learn from those that read also to share. Amen. 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 Okay, I'll, I would like to share something from chapter 5, verse 1. Just an addition to what you said. It says, Now Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the prophet, a descendant of Edo, prophesied to the Jews in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of the God of Israel, who was over them. Okay, so these people were uh, building... I would say they were in the marketplace, per se. But mm -hmm. even while at the marketplace, they had prophets that they listened to. Amen. Mm -hmm. So what I want to highlight here is that it doesn't matter the position that we hold. We need a prophet in our lives. Mm -hmm. If you're a president, you need one. If you're a businessman or woman, you need a prophet in your life. If you're a medical professional, you need a prophet in your life. If you're a carpenter, you need a prophet. There is a reason why Issachar was placed with Zerubbabel. There is a reason why they have to work together. Because it's the sons of Issachar, they knew about the times and the season. The, the Zerubbabel and their entire clan, they went, they were, they were marketplace people. That's why they're represented by a ship. But even though they were brothers, Issachar had a role to wait and hear the Lord to know the times and the season and the way that Israel had to go. Then when all those business people from all the mountains came to Issachar, the sons of Issachar, they received direction as, as receiving direction from their prophet to now go and know how to navigate the waters, be it in the political world, be it in the um, business place, you name it, amen. So I thought I should highlight that aspect about um, the prophets and uh, their place, their role in the marketplace or in business generally. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. As you're just saying, yes, I just, it's, you are true, you are so right because you don't like, um, as children of God, they say like times, like, you know, we go through like, maybe there's a challenge in our life, right? We meet somebody with spiritual insight. That could be a prophet. You are going through so much, you could meet, Either a, a spiritual somebody that has the insight that could like guide you on what to do. So uh, thank you so much. That's the truth. I do agree with you. Yeah. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. 
I'll wait for someone else to say something. I think I have one more comment. Okay, let me share my comments here in verse, okay, verse eight, it says, the king should know that we went to the district of Judah, to the temple of the great God. The people are building it with large stones and placing the timbers in the walls. Mm -hmm. The work is being carried on with diligence and is making rapid progress under their direction. Mm -hmm. That was a very catchy statement that the work is being carried on with diligence and is making rapid progress under their direction. You know, I can see how within the Christian circle, your fellow kingdom citizen will say, I can see your work being carried out with diligence and making progress under your direction. But it's also, as I also consider a big deal when unbelievers can look at you and I and see that we are carrying on the work of God with great diligence and making progress at it with direction, amen. Mm -hmm. So apart from that, it's very important that when we carry out the work of God, may it be said even in our actions, apart from our words, our actions, that we are diligent in what we are doing. And we are actually making progress. We are not stagnant. Amen. We're moving forward. And sometimes stagnation comes because there is no direction. But when we have direction, we are able to advance even further. We know the next step to take and we keep it going. So that was very interesting to me that they carried out this kingdom advancement project with diligence and they made rapid progress. You know, sometimes when it comes to the work of God, we are so sometimes like a desical. But if your boss says, I will fire you tomorrow, okay, the approach will be so different. But do we know that God is the greater boss? And if he fires your boss, your CEO has no say in your life. And he can actually fire our CEOs that we so do, do respect. So if we give such diligence and attention to the, the world, to um, the carnal things of life, mm -hmm. why wouldn't we do even better for eternal things? Because that's what will profit us. That's what will be beneficial. That's what will count after this life. Every other thing that we are doing here is just for survival and sustenance. But then the things that are eternal needs to be given the diligence and the progress that they deserve. Yes, sure. Amen. 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 That's so, so true. And I like the example, you know, Amen. Like, I like the example you talked about, like when it comes to our work, right? Yeah, it's like um, at times, you know, you have to do like a report because I know like now they're pressing on us that they need a report as the year is coming to an end. You know, they need reports. Everybody should do a report. So I just imagine, but as you rightly said, but when it, I don't, when it comes to the things of God, I don't know if we, we do take a report like for the whole year, like what we are trying to do now in our job site to give a whole report for the whole year. So that's the be diligent also too. Thank you so much, Pastor Nietzsche. Man, thank you. And here it says that the, the people are building it with large stones and placing the timbers in the world. I'm not sure why they mentioned, like you rightly said, I'm not sure, but maybe they were using just maybe they were using very pricey uh, materials to they build expensive stones. So the people right. were like, so the happy. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, next yeah, but I believe that the house of God deserves the best, as yeah. we have really read in the book of Haggai, all through, I wouldn't read it again. That's true. It's important that we build the house of God before we build our homes. Yeah. I mean, let God be true and let man be a liar. Amen. This is how it works in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Kingdom values, kingdom um, um, approaches are very different. In life, sometimes we want to we want to settle first. We want to become comfortable. Then we think about the house of God. But in the kingdom, you think about the house of God first. Then you think about your house later. You're not. That doesn't mean you're ignoring your family. But you're just giving priority to who and what is due at that time. 
And according to the father, he wants his house to be built first before we build our houses. Whatever that means to each and every one of us, but that's the, that's the order of the kingdom. Mm-hmm. Remember, a person can be a believer, but not a kingdom citizen. If you have entered the kingdom, this is how you and I should be thinking. Build the house of God and you'll never regret it. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for those wonderful points. Okay. Um, so if there's no more um, contribution, then I'm sure we'll just dive to Ezra 6. Okay, thank you. So now, um, in Ezra 6, I have, a, I have a little summary here. So this chapter, we are going to see what was found. Remember the, the letter that was sent to the decree to Dios for the search, if truly. So we're going to see what, as King Dairus, we're going to see how he took his time to really um, do a thorough search to really see if there were any archives, if there were any, um, like, um, I saw, like, that the, okay, memorandum concerning what, um, King Cyrus left concerning the building of that thing. So we're gonna take a look on that. So um, the decree of Dairus, King Dairus then issue an order and the search in the archives stored in the tr- treasury at Babylon. A scroll was found in the citadel of the Egban. Ek- Ekbantan in the province of Media, and this was written on it. Amen. So thank God that um, this 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 really tells us that we see that the hand of God, the eye of God, really helped um, King Darius to go find find that report because probably maybe if he didn't find it, I'm sure they should have stopped. They should have gone ahead and asked those people to stop. But thank God that. Um, God did assist him and he did found something that King Cyrus left. And they said he found it in a city called Egbantani. Egbantani. That's where he found the, the this thing, the, the scroll, the archives. And verse three now says, um, this was what was written now by uh, King Cyrus in that archive that King Darius found. In the first year of King Cyrus, the king issued a decree concerning the temple of God in Jerusalem. Let the temple be rebuilt as a place to present sacrifice and let it let its foundation be laid. It is to be 60 cubes high and 60 cubes wide with three courses of large stones and one of the timbers. The costs are to be paid by the royal treasury. Also, the gold and the silver article of the house of God, which Nebuchadnezzar took from the temple in Jerusalem and brought to Babylon are to be returned to their place in the temple in Jerusalem. They are to be deposited in the house of God. So we now see that um, King Jairus now found the, the, the report of everything, how um, King Cyrus has left a report that about the, the continuation that they should rebuild back the, this thing, the, 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 the temple, the house of God. Then it, elab- it elaborates how, the, how they're going to do it. It, talk that this, it says that let the, the, let the temple be rebuilt as a palace to present the sacrifice and let it be the foundation, let the foundation be laid. I remember, um, I listened to Pastor Mujer, he talked about the foundation, it's like the altar. He was talking that the, the altar is very important if you want to be your house. The first thing is to erase your altar because um, the altar is where you, 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 all your sacrifice or whatsoever. 
that your worship to God. So that's the first thing you, 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 you if you want to build your house, you start by laying that um, your, your, your altar. So it's just like the same thing that is saying here. So they gave us the, 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 that it should be 60 cubits height and 60, that's the height of it. And then the, the width of it. With, uh, they talked about three courses of large stones and one of the timbers. And then the cost, so the, the, the cost of, so it's like, the, the cost of this thing is not gonna be on King Dairos, but the cost gonna be, I think on the, the, the governor, it's gonna be on like, um, I, I'm sure these are people like the taxes. So well, maybe what the, the taxes that people do pay, they are going to use it. They, 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 they are going to use it to pay all of the, the prizes for all of the whatever things that they are going to use. So it talks about also the gold and the silver, the article of the house of God, which Nebuchadnezzar. So it, um, they did set mention in it also that they have to carry back everything that um, Nebuchadnezzar, all those golds, those silver, they have to take it back to the temple. They have to bring it back to the temple in Jerusalem, brought back to Babylon, and to return to their places in the temple in Jerusalem. They are to be deposited in the house of God. Amen. Verse 6 now says, Now, then, Tatania, governor of the trans and Shitaya, Boisenia, and you other officials of that province, stay away from there. Do not interfere with the work on this temple of God. Let the governor of the Jews and the, the Jews and the Jewish elders rebuild this house of God on its site. So this was a letter back, this was a letter from Jairus back to this, um, the Titania governor and his associates telling them not to stop the Jews, not to stop the Jews that they were not to stop the Jews to build the, the house of God or not even to interfere. So he now sent the letter to them, telling them not to stop them. And I want to believe that probably maybe they were angry because since has now um, he has asked them to use the, is it the, the royal treasury, what the money from the royal treasury? I'm sure probably that's why um, they, they, were, they were not happy knowing that. Um, they will not be having money again from the tax whatsoever. So probably, I'm sure. So um, Darius has asked them not to interfere, that he should allow the Jews to continue the building and the elders of the Jews, that they should continue the building of the house of God. Moreover, I hereby decree what you are to do for these elders of the Jews in the construction of this house. Their expenses are to be fully paid out of the royal treasury from the revenue of the trans Ufreas so that the work will not be stopped. So now they will be the one paying for this work to be done. Amen. So now King Darius now, this is really interesting. So, um, just imagine that um, you and I were the one on this assignment to like, um, to, to, to build like, let's say maybe um, um, to build um, a church for God, right? To be a house of God, a prayer cell whatsoever. Then we have opposition. But at the end, because, because God has assigned us and God has assured us, now the same people that, um, that persecuting us not to build this house. The same people that the world now that will have to turn around now, giving us money in order to complete the building. So I just picture how, how upset they should be, knowing that they were trying to stop us, but now instead it has turned around. Instead, they'll be the ones, they'll be the ones sponsoring the project of the building. And, and they'll have to make sure that 
the work will not stop. The work will have to continue. Now he says, whatever is needed, young bulls, rams, males, lambs for burnt offerings to the gods of heaven, wheat, salt, wine, olive oil, as requested by the priests in Jerusalem, must be given them daily without fail. So it's like, it's saying that on a daily basis, they have to, they have to, um, they have to give them all these resources to make sure that, and they, sh they should not fail. This is like, it's a decree that King Jairus is now saying to them. They should make sure that they give it to them daily. All of this thing that I've listed, the sacrifice that they need it for this to, to complete this, um, the, the, to complete to build the house of God, the temple. So they that may offer sacrifice, this is to God of heaven and pray to the well-being of the king and his sons. I'm sure um, they have talked a lot about sacrifices on this altar and the, and encouraging us to like, um, that when it comes to sacrifices, you know, we, we like the sacrifices that we have to make, you know, it's not like, um, even though they talked about this one, um, they talked about the, 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 the ram, the bull or whatsoever. Um, I remembered like, like for the kingdom advancement, um, I remember um, that in the message that I missed, they said, we're not going to use um, rams or bulls or whatsoever to do the kingdom advancement. But firstly, our life, um, in Romans 12 say we should offer ourselves, ourself, we should put ourselves first on the altar. And also it need um, prayers. It need, uh, we need the word of God. We need a lot of things that were listed in order to do what, in order to, to sacrifice, to advance the kingdom of God. Amen. Verse 11 says, Furthermore, I decree that if anyone defies this edict, a beam is to be pulled from their house and they are to be impelled on it. And for their crime, their house is to be made a pile of rubble. May God, who has caused his name to dwell there, overthrow any king or people who lift, lift a hand to change this decree or to destroy this temple in Jerusalem. Amen. So this was really, I, Dairus, I, Dairus, has decreed it. Let it be carried out with diligence. That diligence that Mama Mija just explained this diligence to us again. And Mama Mija just explained, ex, um, explained it to us. So um, this is Dairus. This, this was a letter that Dairus wrote back to them, to the, uh, the Tatania, the governor and his associate. That he said, any person, that wants to go against this letter and even against the word of God. Let um, they say so what is going to befall them. Their house or whatsoever, where was it again? That something gonna befall them. You know, like they said to, um, there's a consequence for everything. There's a consequence. They said, um, the, the wages of sin is dead. So, okay, thank you. For I decree that if, anyone defies this edict, a beam is to be pulled from their house and they are to be impelled on it. And for their crime, their house is to be made a pile of rubble. I don't know what's rubble. Maybe, maybe Pastor Mijo help me with this one. Okay, so, that's rubble, like, like dirt, like rubbish. Like, you know how you scatter, destroy a house? And uh, like, whatever is left is, is rubble. Okay. Like, no use. Okay, thank you so much. So this is this this is the consequence that if you don't obey what is written upon that letter, so these are the things that are gonna be formed. 
These are the things that are going to befall you. Amen. So I want to believe that it's the same thing that um, if we have to reflect this to our own daily life, in order to advance the kingdom, God's kingdom, as Pastor Media was saying, that when it comes to the things of God, we should put it, we should put it, um, we should take it prior, we should put it like a priority on our top list, right? And we should do it so diligent in a way that knowing, knowing that this is the work of God, which it should be the best, whatever we are doing concerning anything that concerns God. Because actually, um, um, actually, um, I want to believe that um, if we don't do it with all our hearts, with all diligence, um, probably they're going to be, um, it's not like, um, how do I put it? You know, it's like, but probably there must be somebody that will do it diligent, but the person that will not deal with diligent, they're going to be a consequence somehow at the end of it they're going to be they're going to be something along the line, even if it doesn't at times they said um, you know, it's like they said um, if you are being assigned to do something and you don't keep to the rules or the laws, you break the laws there's also a consequence, because with this one, I want to, that this, this is a decree that has been passed so if you don't keep to it, this is what's going to happen. It's the same thing with us. If we don't keep to the principles, the promises of God, or the promises of God's word, or the, the, his principles of his word in order to have this, there are principles that say, when we do this, we have this. There are promises, well, when we keep this, we have this. So if we don't keep those promises, we will not, we will not see those things. It will not happen. But at the same time, we want to blame God, but instead, it's just because we failed the principles or we didn't keep the promises. Amen. So I want to believe that there was a decree that was being passed by King Darius. So now look at the, the completion and the dedication of the temple, 13. Then because of the decree of King Darius had sent, Tatania, the governor of trans and Shitaya, Bozaniah, and their associate, carry it, carry it out with diligence. Amen. They did obey and they did exactly diligent. They did this exactly what was asked for them to do. They did it. So the elders of the Jews continued to build and prosper under the preaching of guy and the prophet Zachariah. They prosper. The elders of the Jews, they continue to build and they prosper under the preaching of Haggai and the prophet Zachariah and the descendant of Edom. They finish the building and the temple according to the command of the God of Israel and the decree of Cyrus, Darius and Atezazet, king of Persia, the temple was completed on the third day of the month of Eda, in the sixth year of the reign of King Cyrus. So because with the letter everything, they did obey, and with the, the word of God, the prophecy that came, the prophecy that came from the two prophets, everything went smoothly. And because they did, they did it under the command of the God of Israel and the decree of Cyrus and the priest also. So everything went smoothly and everybody prospered. And the temple was completed on the third day of the month of Eda. That should be a feasting day, holy day. So verse 16 says, then the people of Israel, the priests, the Levites, and the rest of the, the exile celebrate the dedication of the house of God with joy. For the dedication of this house of God, they offer a hundred bulls, 200 rams, 400 male lambs, and as of a sin offering for all the Israelites, 12 male goats, one 
for each of the tribe of Israel. So there were 12 male goats, I said, representing the 12 tribes. So none of the tribe of Israel were left out. So all the tribe of Israel, they were presented also. And they installed the prince in this division and the Levites in their group for the service of God at Jerusalem, according to what is written in the book of Moses. Wow. So with all of this, you see, despite for despite because the beginning was really terrible. Look at how look at how um the look at how joyful the ending is. Everything is just coming to, you know, the vision. I was really talking about the oneness, the unity. Everything is now coming together. Amen. <clears throat> then the Passover. On the 14th day of the first month, the exile celebrated the Passover. The priest, the Levites, had purified themselves and were all ceremonially cleaned. The Levites slaughtered the Levite, they slaughtered the Passover lamb for all the exile, for their relatives, the prince, and for themselves. So the Israelites who had returned from the exile ate it together with all who had separated themselves from the unclean practice of their Gentiles neighbor in order to seek the Lord, the God of Israel. For the seventh day, they celebrate with joy the feast of the unleavened bread because the Lord had filled them with joy by changing the attitude of the king of Assyria to, to that he assisted them in the work on the house of God, the God of Israel. Amen. The mm-hmm. king of Assyria. So we see that um, at times they said um, the, 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 the heart of man is in the palm, is in the palm of the Lord. He can control and direct it in whatever direction. So we could see how he tilted all of them. The Assyria he tilted them and bring them in the house of God, the God of Israel. So we see about the celebration, how after they, they, they had finished building everything, we saw how the celebration, the, the happiness, the joyfulness in everything because of the hand of God that was over them. Amen. 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 So thank you everyone and uh, This was all I have. This was what I extracted from five and six. So um, the floor is open for six to share whatever you like to share or for me to learn also from what you read. Good night. Besides um, reading, I was listening to an explanation and it was saying that you know how the artifacts were stolen when they attacked and put a, you know, had, had attacked the people and they were placed, not that they were stolen, but they were taken and they were stored in the king's house. So, and then here it is that they were given back to be placed in the temple. So it could be looked at like, although they might be looked like, okay, they were taken away initially, but maybe look at it as they were kept to be preserved for such a time as now that the temple is being rebuilt to allow them to go back into where they was, you know, supposed to be. Okay. Yeah. So it was taken and kept by? In the king's um, okay. possession. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's just like the articles that were taken, King Nebuchadnezzar took from Babylon and uh, not from Jerusalem and started in his in the temple of his gods in, in Babylon. Then when it was time for the, the Israelites to now go back to Babylon, King Cyrus say, said that they should take out those articles from that storehouse and go back with it. I think it's a similar situation, right, Sister Perdita? Yes, that's it. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Mm. Okay. I have a few things to also share. You know, while you spoke, I began to appreciate, you know, the benefits of documentation. 
you know, it's good to, well, not everybody's good at documenting, but it is a good habit to have, even if you're not a scribe, because some people are scribes, you know, by calling. <laughs> But it's good to document well because it was because of good documentation that King Darius was able to search his records and now see that a letter had been issued by King Cyrus that these people should continue this project. Just think, just imagine that they went and did a search and there was no letter, nothing had been kept. I mean, this project would have just come to a standstill until God uses another route. So I just saw the power of documentation in the process. And also I saw the benefit of having a destiny helper at the state level, you know, a different kind of network. You know, mm -hmm. the only person who would have ensured that this project continue had to come from a state level, the king, the throne. Just imagine they, they went and asked one, just a common person, you know, whether or not this project should continue. They wouldn't even consider them. I don't think that's true, yeah. And yeah. So sometimes we need um, those kind, that kind of influence at a very higher level that could ensure that what we are doing for the Lord actually advances. Because the Lord, may be, you may be called to the mountain of government. You will not be soliciting the help of um, a medical professional. You will need the president to speak in your stead. Amen. You need a president of a country to speak in your stead if you've been called to the office of a, to the mountain of um of government mm -hmm. so that's what i saw in this particular scenario where darius was able to speak on behalf of the israelites such that this project continued mm -hmm. now this the next point i want to make is really for those who are interested in going deeper with their bible studies so now where every time we see the name cyrus Darius, i know what most of us are thinking we know that these are names you know, when we see Atazexes and we see Zexes or we see Ahasuerus, we think those are their names. Now, well, 99% of the time it's not their names. It's just a title. Amen. Mm -hmm. This is for Bible study, um, Bible students. If you want to go deeper with that thought, by all means do so. You discover for yourself that not every Darius was a Darius by name. It was, a, it was Darius by assignment or by title. Mm -hmm better still by title and not every Cyrus was Cyrus by name as in the birth name it was Cyrus by title and uh, most probably those people had other names but when they assumed this position they gave them this title as Cyrus or Dyrus or uh, Cyrus or at the Zexus or Zexus amen okay mm -hmm. so I'll leave that thought at that now um in verse 14 it says that so the elders of the Jews continued to build and prosper under the preaching of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah, the descendant of Edo. And they finished the building, they finished building the temple according to the command of the God of Israel and the decrees of Cyrus, Darius, and Atazexes, kings of Persia. Okay, so now we see something here, the importance and the place of the prophets in the lives of people, even in the marketplace that the they, they, the builders prospered under the preaching of these people. What, what am I trying to say? That preachers or teachers or people who have been called solely to the office of ministering the word have a place in the marketplace as well. That you could be in the marketplace or just in any other mountain, but the mountain of religion. You may be in any of those mountains and just maybe you're not prospering because you don't have a prophet in your life. You know, you, you prosper by the prophet and you're established by God. We know 2 Chronicles 20 verse 20, right? Yes. Um, believe the Lord your God and you shall be established. Believe his prophets and you will prosper. Mm -hmm. So here is um, another scripture to help us with that. They continue to build and prosper under the preaching of prophets. You prosper under prophets. You're established by God. Amen. So this is really powerful just to support that point. So that caught my attention as well. So we should never despise a place of having a 
a prophet or a man or woman of God in our lives that can help us navigate waters in whatever area the Lord has called us into. You could even be a lawyer, amen, but you need a prophet. You could be a surgeon, but you need a prophet. Amen. It doesn't matter what field you find yourself in. You need a prophet in your life. I need one. I have one. Even though I, I teach the word. Amen. Okay. So um, verse 16, it says, Then the people of Israel, the priests, the Levites, and the rest of the exiles celebrated the dedication of the house of God with joy. So I just want to highlight here that, you know, it's, I think it's a beautiful thing to, to dedicate a finished work. Let's say we embark on a specific kingdom advancement project. Mm -hmm. I think it's a beautiful thing that at the end, we dedicate the completion of that project into the hands of the Lord so that whatever that uh, product or project produced, uh, we should, we should, the Lord will ensure that it fulfills the purpose for which it was made or whatever it is it was made or created or bought whatever it is just like when we buy a house it's not, it's a good thing to dedicate the house people dedicate their babies their cars you know some people dedicate their jobs just whatever it is a lot enables us to have i think it's a good thing to dedicate all of those things and so that the hand of the lord will be upon it Amen. Amen. Then um, it says here, okay, talked about all of those. And they installed verse 18, and they installed the priests in their divisions and the Levites in their groups for the service of God at Jerusalem, according to what is written in the book of Moses, telling us that there is order in the house of God. Amen. Uh, I always say it's good that when you have a you have a responsibility, carry out your own responsibility. Um, with diligence and effectively because when one person doesn't do what they have to do it's a ripple effect it affects so many other things that are not seen so there is a reason why there is order there's a reason why people are given specific responsibility you know so they divided the, the assignments between the priests the levites and just for the service of god so it is with us when we have those assignments let's take them seriously then at the end, I think you mentioned the fact that, you know, despite the challenges, the people were able to overcome and at the end, they celebrated. So it, it reminded me about the importance of prevailing in life. You know, quite often when we pray, we say, Father, I need a breakthrough. I need a breakthrough. But do we know that there is something greater than a breakthrough? It's called the lifestyle of the prevailer. When you prevail, when you prove to be stronger than every opposing force, meaning that you've mastered the art of overcoming in that area and you have chosen to remain above. But you know, with breakthrough, it happens too suddenly. And then we don't know how we achieved it. So the devil is able to take that breakthrough back from us. Then now we start wondering, oh, but I, I, I made it here, but how I had a breakthrough here, but now I've lost it. So how do I reachieve what I've lost? And we don't know because we don't know how we've even got the breakthrough. But what I want to say to us here is that better than the breakthrough is the lifestyle of a prevailer. In our ministry, our, our, our mission is um, growth excellence prevail, not growth excellence breakthrough, because breakthrough are for babies in the kingdom. As mature citizens, let's desire a prevailing lifestyle where you've mastered the art of conquering in several areas of your life and you have chosen to live above and not beneath. And when the enemy hits or when you fall, you can know what principles to put back together in order to rise back to where you were. That's the lifestyle of a person who prevails. Mm -hmm. One last thing, and please, this is from the book of Haggai. I forgot to mention, it caught my attention while you were reading. Haggai, um, where was that? I think it's verse 11. It says, this is when the Lord, you were explaining how the Lord was speaking to them about the significance of building his house and the consequences of not building his house. 
He says here that he, the Lord, called for a drought on the fields and the mountains, on the grain, the new wine, the olive oil, and everything else the ground produces on people and livestock and on all the labor of your hands. Amen. Because I have an, some insight about, you know, the Lord's Supper, one thing that uh, the Lord has trained me to look out for is this combination, which I want to introduce to us. Every time you see the grain, new wine and olive oil, is talking about the bread and the wine and the anointing. Every time you see it. Amen. Mm. So that caught my attention when you were reading. And immediately the Holy Spirit was telling me that when we fail to build a house of God, before building our own house, he will cause a drought on our fellowship and our anointing. Because what is the fellowship here? The fellowship is the grain and the wine, the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And now when we fellowship with the body and the blood of Jesus Christ, we gain insights because the body is the, is the word of God. We, we gain insights and there is no anointing without the word. There is a connection between all three. So if he causes a drought on these two, it is guaranteed that these two will not be there. Mm -hmm. It always starts with the grain and the wine. Because in the absence of fellowship, there is no anointing. And there is no anointing without the word. But better still. So if you say that this man and woman is an anointed man and woman of God, the first question that you should be asking that person who is telling you, or asking yourself is, are they students of the word? If a person is not a student of the word, a person is not anointed. It's that simple. It doesn't matter the gymnastics they play on stage. It doesn't matter the charisma and all of that. Void of the bread and wine, there is no oil, period. Okay. Amen. Mm -hmm. well, so when we don't build the house of the Lord, we suffer in those areas. Then we'll pray, we'll call for all manner of fasting and prayer just so that we should understand the word. It's simple, just build the house of God and that will open up to you. Amen. 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 Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for throwing more enlightenment on it. <laughs> Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Mami Jed, and thank you for everyone that contributed. And uh, on this note, and uh, I think I'm gonna end. And uh, let's see, I'm going to call somebody to pray for us. Hmm. Minister Coco, Minister Coco, Amen, Amen. Thank you so much. Please, um, can you just close us with a prayer, please? Amen, Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for unveiling mysteries of the book of Ezra to us in the chapter five and the chapter six. Father, we thank you for using your anointed powerfully to minister to us. Lord, we thank you for your prophets that you have given unto us since the time of old. We thank you for your prophets on this platform. Father, we thank you as well for the teachers that build us up in the word of God. Papa, we thank you for unveiling another mystery to us tonight concerning the grain, the wine, and the oil. That we need all of that. Us, ourselves being out there for you. And then, Father God, we thank you so much for reminding us of the burden bearers when we look at uh, Zerubbabel and the people that built the temple. Father, we thank you for using them all to teach us when it comes to different assignments you have called us to. Lord, we bless your name tonight. We give you praise. Father, we thank you so much that your hand was upon the life of your chosen one. This anointed that you have sent to rebuild your temple. 
Oh, Father, thank you for reminding us that we cannot do anything outside of you. We cannot do it, Lord. Thank you for letting us know that when you call, Father, you provide everything for the calling. And your presence will always win for us. Lord, we bless your name. Thank you also for the victory you have given your people. We have learned from this that when you are on our side, victory is guaranteed. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the strength that we are gained. Thank you for the, all the mystery that were unveiled to us in this book. Lord, we bless your name. We give you praise. We give you honor. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now. Bless and mercy and follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of Amen. 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 Thank you, Minister. Good night. Thank you, everyone. Have a Thank blessed you. Day. Good night, everyone. Bye. Good night.